the name of Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, amen. The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 23. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we're getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, one could make a case that this thief, whom tradition gives us a name, Dismas, one could make the case that Dismas needs to get his eyes checked. Maybe we could blame it on the crucifixion. He's been nailed to a cross. He's been hanging there for a few hours, dying. He may not be in his right mind. And if that's the case, if he was in his right mind, he probably wouldn't turn to the guy getting crucified next to him, asking for help and advice. This seems to be a classic case, the definition of the foolishness of God that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Greeks look for wisdom, Paul said. It doesn't seem all that wise to look to a condemned criminal for help. Jews seek miraculous signs, Paul said. That's exactly what the crowds of his Jewish opponents said time and time again, what they tried to tease out of him that day. Come on down. If you're the Christ, save yourself. The other Gospels even tell us that Dismas joined in with his comrade in crucifixion, who also gets a name in church history and tradition, Gestus, and that both of them joined together in heaping insults upon Christ, mocking him and blaspheming. Who could look at Jesus? Who could look at the cross? Who could look at this equally condemned man, this equally dying man, and say, well, this guy can solve all my problems. But that's exactly what Dismas did. He turned to Jesus, and he put all the money in his pockets on Jesus, and he said, remember me. Jesus, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. Nothing but faith tells us to look at this disfigured man, this marred man, and see anything but what he appears to me, just another dying man. My eyes don't see him bearing up my wounds and my sickness and my death, my sins. My eyes don't see him justifying many as he bears sins. My eyes don't see him handing out and spreading out and giving out spoils. He doesn't see him having any spoils at all. My eyes don't see the greatness of the Lord. My eyes don't see God looking upon the lowly, lifting them up, helping his servants, keeping his promises. My eyes see death and destruction. My eyes see failure. My eyes just see another in a long line of messiahs hoisted on his own petard. But then Jesus speaks. I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. We could use C.S. Lewis's trilogy of options here. Either Jesus has just told the great lie in history, or he's a loony beyond all loonies, or he's the Lord. the Lord to whom we can go, like David, and say, wash me. Do not look at my guilt. Save me from my blood guilt, O Lord. Give me a new spirit. Give me a new heart. Renew me, Lord. Sustain me. And that's what Dismas did. He came to Jesus with a word of faith. Remember me. And God answered you will be with me in paradise. 
a little bit different response than everybody else who met Jesus on that first Friday, wasn't it? The crowds see Jesus and they can only call him rebel, revolutionary, traitor, treason. They'd much rather have Barabbas than Jesus. Herod sees Jesus and he wants a miracle, like Dismas, but unlike Dismas, only to satisfy his morbid curiosities. Pilate sees Jesus and he sees an innocent man and yet sends him to the cross. Dismas and Gestus see Jesus and they see only someone to ridicule. You saved others. Save yourself. Save us. Until everything changed for Dismas. We wonder when it happened. Was it as he heard Jesus speak words of forgiveness while they nailed him to a cross? Father, forgive them for they don't know what they did. Was it as he sees Jesus dying, forgiving his murderers, and at the same time making sure to provide for the care of his mother and his dear friend John? Had Dismas been taken faithfully to Saturday school by his parents, and now finally he remembers the words the rabbis had taught him, words about one pierced for man's transgressions, about one crushed for man's iniquities, about one whose punishment would bring us peace, words he had spent his life ignoring, words he had spent his life trampling under his crimes and his sins. But now he remembers. Whatever it was, we rejoice. And we rebel against it a little bit. We rejoice because the lost has been found. We rejoice because the dead is now alive again, but at the same time, deep down, something in us rejects this viscerally. We don't like deathbed conversions. We feel about as happy about these things as those workers in Jesus' parable did. The workers who discovered at the end of a long day of working that they were going to be paid exactly the same thing as the guys who worked for an hour. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, Lord. You're telling me that Dismas gets to sin boldly? He gets to sin criminally? He gets to sin enough to earn a death penalty? He gets to mock and blaspheme you right up until the moment he's going to die and now he's in? He's in heaven? This criminal? Another criminal in heaven? There goes the neighborhood. Don't you dare rebel against this. Don't you dare. Because this is the only reason we can have hope today. This is the only reason today is a good Friday. Gestus curses God and dies. Dismas runs to God in his suffering. And God hears him. Because that's what God does. Because that's what your father promised. Because those are the words that your Lord speaks to you. Those are the words that give the tangible signs of that promise any power of baptism and the Lord's Supper. God's words of promise. Words like those of the Psalms we sang and heard and read tonight. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord, and in his word I put my hope. I think we would all agree that there wasn't much good to be found in Dismas, except for the good that the Holy Spirit worked in him. Dismas turned to Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cynically, we say, well, he had nowhere else to go. Better late than never. That's the point. That's the very point of the gospel. God thrusts his son in front of our eyes. He shows us time and again who we are. Murderers, thieves, criminals, rebels, blasphemers, sinners. And then he shows us his son, declared innocent by Pilate, declared innocent by Herod, 
declared innocent by Dismas, declared innocent by that Roman centurion, declared innocent by the world itself, a world that went dark upon his death, a world that trembled violently, a world where the curtain of the temple ripped, declared innocent by a tomb that could not and would not stay closed, a tomb that could not condemn him, that could not keep this foolishly crucified Christ. Standing next to this Christ, or as in the case of Dismas, hanging next to this Christ, leaves us with nothing. I can't stand next to him. I can't hang next to him. So he hung next to me instead of me. And this word of our God, this great I love you, did not return to God empty. This word grabbed Dismas and it changed his life forever. He confessed his faults, his miserable faults, all of them, and he hurled himself upon Christ for hope, begging Christ for life, begging Christ for forgiveness, begging Christ for mercy, begging Christ for grace, begging Christ for hope, begging Christ for a place, a lowly place, the doorkeeper's place in a kingdom that he knew Christ to be the king of. And Jesus said yes. cross of Christ is God's great yes. God's amen. That cross is the place where Jesus bleeds, where Jesus dies, and God shows you just how serious he is when he talks to you. Just how serious he is when he speaks the words of Psalm 50, call upon me. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. I will deliver you, he says. And he means it. Miracle of miracles, he means it. And he has the ability to back it up. He has a kingdom after all, with spoils to divide out and share in an incredibly stunning way. Jesus makes the last to be first as he brings Dismas into the kingdom of God. And God treats sinners like you no differently. He washed you. He sanctified you. He justified you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God, he did those things as impure as you were, as unclean as you were, as criminal as you were. Despite all of that, he still applied his logic to you. Come, let's sit together and talk about this. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. He did all this by making the first last, his son, the king. The king who speaks these words of promise to Dismas, words of promise to you as he dies for you in your place on your cross. A good Friday indeed. Amen.